There was a split in the U.S. military and the government. The elite of world rulers controlled the military, and they had made the deal with the Greys and were allowing the kidnapping and other things to go on. When certain other members of the military in the NSA, they found about, out about the extent of it and how bad it was, they planned this mission. They knew that they, had, they were going to get one strike at it, and most of them, would, their heads would probably roll afterwards, and most of them did. Under secret presidential orders signed by Jimmy Carter, the NSA's Department Z, the newly established Delta Force, an especially hand-picked group of Air Force, SOC, Navy SEAL, and Army Rangers, were organized for a mission so secret that not even command officers were told what it was until the night of the attack. The only attack team leaders who knew what this would be about were the men involved in the NSA Department Z, who had been involved with the fight for years. As the attack began on the Dulce base, as Cat 1 and Cat 2 came in on cargo tube train several levels underground. Cat 4 was going to hit with a SEAL team coming through a water intake as the main group had a small support hatch that would allow them to open another hatch to allow the SEAL team to begin. The human forces had to quickly find out where every base was that might react to an attack on Dulcie and how long it would take before they may send rescue forces. Said everything, however, revolved around the success Cat 3's attack in the main landing port as they had to remove the main security control room and the Sonic's weaponry system that was controlled from there. It came racing in over the Badlands and it said five miles behind it was the main assault force being flown in heavy air force helicopters. The timing had to be perfect, hanging on the timely arrival of a large disc like vehicle that was a known and expected cargo shuttle from space. Blanketing holographic projectors were turned off and the entry glass doors were opened for the landing shuttle. Flew right in with the disc almost on top of it and started firing. At the same time, troops were coming in from the transport tubes and the different uh, water supply vents, air vents, things like that main control room was taken over. Hoovering the X-222 continued to use its rockets and guns to wreck the enemy weapons in the fort. As the men of the Cat-3 were now taking heavy weapons fire from a number of directions in the landing port, they had disabled the main weapons pod and the sonic systems for the whole facility, allowing the other teams to attack from the different directions and locations. An alien security team had managed to close the main doors into the central hub. First, two men who attempted to get explosives close enough to damage the huge door were cut down by enemy fire. Taking heavy damage, the X-22 rolled forward and from less than 40 yards fired the remaining rockets. The resulting explosion blew the doors open and killed anybody on the other side of the feet. It says Mark Richards was forced to shut down the X-22 because the engines were overheating. said he took command of one of the Cat-3's attack teams and led the attack through the still smoking entry into the main central hub. So other teams were attacking from the other directions. The multi-level facility at Dulce, with its central hub controlled by an extensive base security force, grew far more extensive and complex than the human attackers had been ready to cope with in the original plan. The guy that had tipped them off on the inside, Thomas Castello, had an Ultra 7 clearance, and that gave him clearance into the first seven levels. When they got there, they found out it was much more. But it says most of the aliens were supposedly uh, on levels 5, 6, and 7, but there were more. There were also a um, more vast network of shuttle connections under the ground than expected, extending into a global network that had not been recorded, providing escape routes and entry ports for rapidly deployed additional security forces that had not been expected. They were not ready for what they found in Level 6.
Report spoke of multi-armed, multi-legged humans in cages and bats. Humanoid, like creatures as tall as seven feet, says the aliens had learned a great deal about genetics, both useful and frightening, and most of it had been learned at the cost of human suffering and lives. Captain Leather's flight reached level seven first, blowing the main hub entrance open and neutralizing the security force with extreme prejudice in less than 45 seconds. On entering the security station, they realized the extent of the facility for the first time. What they did, they came into the control room and it was like a studio with multiple monitors. They actually had 62 different monitors and they were almost uh, a holographic monitor. What they saw was they had uh, the facility for watching and controlling over 30 thousand captives on that one level alone. Captain Leathers looked into the images of scenes of horror that are impossible to express in words. A zoo of human beings in various states of health and mental condition. Images of young women being tortured at the, that very moment. Once they realized the extent of the facility and the number of people there, that uh, Captain, Captain Richards was given permission to extend the operation longer, even though it would become more and more dangerous as troops were being brought in uh, through the shuttle tubes. Thousands of aliens trying to kill us, thousands of human females screaming for help, thousands more far gone, so far gone that we knew we would have to leave them behind. Thousands of enemy troops starting to arrive on the subway trains. We were not set up for a mass evacuation. So they started loading girls into the two trains and shooting them off as soon as we knew our forces were in control of the stations at the other end. So we blew two air shafts wide open so two squads could get girls out that way into the fresh air where hopefully our people could pick them up. Since Cat 4 took a beating as they fought to keep reinforcements from entering the main sub-tube station. There's no doubt that uh, in his mind he said that we stayed in the facility too long, but at the time it was very hard to leave these poor women behind. You knew that everyone you failed to send out in front of you was going to die and soon. That exactly one hour after the X-22 had first attacked the main port entry, they were given the orders for a full recall. Obviously, they had taken some of these alien craft and did a reverse engineering as they captured them, shot it down, or were given the technology, whatever. But it says David Griggs and R.E. McNair had by then managed to get two alien craft airborne, one disc craft and one of the highly advanced triangle fire craft. It said now at this point they were running for Area 51 when they escaped here. It said the human attack teams were now withdrawing behind walls of smoke and set explosions. One of the frightening bits of equipment that one of the teams had found but had been forced to leave behind was a type of cell electrostatic disruption device called a CED. It's a weapon that can be set to disrupt the cells of the living creature at a subatomic level. To make sure that there would be no survivors left in the facility, the device was set by the MAT technicians to go off shortly after the full withdrawal of the attack team. It's at 72 minutes, 14 seconds after the attack had started. The X-22 and the battlecraft princely markings cleared the landing port's blast doors and dashed for safety. Explosions from dozens of set bombs started to blow up enemy craft as they took off. 35 seconds after they cleared the doors, the CED went on, causing every life form alien and human left inside the facility to de molecular rise on a subatomic level. Only a few in the heavily shielded lowest shelter level survived. The human female survivors were taken to, the, to several top secret military bases where they were deprogrammed and rehabilitated so they could be slowly farmed back into society with no memory of what they had suffered. 